Hey guys, over the years on a number of different videos we've talked about the Japanese school system, education system, jukus, homework, all that sort of stuff on a variety of different videos. Interestingly, this video has actually triggered by a documentary made by a professor of uh, education from Harvard University and it was actually about the, the Finnish education system, the education system in Finland, because over the last number of years, Finland has topped the world in education and all sorts of things. Actually, I made some notes while we're sitting at the lights. They're number two in the world in happiness, which is an interesting one, right behind Denmark, but in all sorts of other things as well. Technology, they're number, I think they're number two in technology as well innovation per capita or something like that but just topping the world in all sorts of things particularly education and it was really interesting it was quite a long documentary you can find it on YouTube if you if you search for it Finnish education system and it was a four-part documentary quite long and he really got into it into finding out why the, the Finnish education system worked the reason that this video is being made is that we sort of mentioned on, on a previous video about faffing, about how much time is spent on education in Japan and how most of it seems to be unnecessary. And it was amazing watching this video, watching this documentary of this Harvard professor, just about every relevant point that he made about why the Finnish system works was the opposite of what happens in Japan. It was absolutely amazing. It was like every single thing that, that, that that Finland does to be successful at education, Japan does the exact opposite. So we'll get into some examples. There was, uh, uh, he said that in in some school systems like Japan, that the the system is based on competition between between schools and between students, and and it's all about the competition. And he said, whereas in Finland they focus on collaboration because when you get out in the business world. That is usually, or the real world, that's usually what you end up doing, collaborating with people, working with people and things. Uh, another one was Finland focuses on e equal education for everybody. So everybody has the same opportunity to have the same education. And that's exactly the opposite of what Japan does. Japan has a system based on the opposite of those two main points there is first of all they test to death everything's tested to death and then the results of those tests dictate what class you'll go into and they start doing that in elementary school so if the 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 top students in the the result of the test the, the result of the test and the top students the top ranking students get put in a in their own class and the and the rest of the people get either put in a middle class or the lowest people get put in special classes so right from the very start of, of, of your educational life in Japan, you start to get put in a box. And because once you're in that box, it'd be really hard to get out because then every time they, they do a test, if you, you know, the people at the top are put in the special classes and everybody else is, is separated off. And then what school you get to go to is dictated by that too. And that includes the government schools. So the, the, the best, and see, this here's the other thing, that schools are tested between each other as to which schools are the best schools and the best universities. And then the kids, the, the, the best schools take the best kids. So kids, will, kids, to get into high school, junior high school, they have to set a test. And they'll, they'll all try and get into the best school, but of course only the best students will get accepted. And then the next, the next you know, they have to, have to take their second choice of school or third choice of school. And then, of course, that follows through then right up to university, and then that follows through into what sort of job you can get. So basically, from elementary school, they're putting people in boxes, and because it's all competition-based, and that's why we've mentioned in previous videos, you know, they'll go to school at eight o'clock in the morning, and they'll be there till four in the afternoon, and then they'll leave, and then they go to Juku, you know, the private school they go to in the afternoon to do homework and extra study, and, and they'll be at Juku till nine or 10 o'clock at night. You know, we know a 10 year old boy, and it's all he does. You know, you say, What did you do on the weekend? And I went to Juku. What did you do in the holidays? What did you do in the summer holidays? I went to Juku. And that's all he does. He goes to school, he goes to Juku, and that's all he's doing. He's just studying. And that was the other thing that they said. 
uh, Finnish students, their, their lessons are an hour and a half long, so they're long lessons, but they might only have two or three of them in a day. So they're not spending a lot of time at school, and usually they have almost no homework. Uh, the, the students I interviewed only did about two or three hours homework a week. So they're doing, you know, if you add the school time and the and the homework time together, they're doing probably a fifth, a fifth or a quarter of as much work as what the Japanese students are doing, and they're getting much much better results. On that too, just mentioned about the interview thing. Here's another interesting point too: the the Finnish students that were interviewed were like 14, 15, 16 years old and all of them could speak at least two or three languages and most and many of them could speak four languages. Uh, they all speak Finnish, uh, a lot of them speak Danish and then a lot of them speak English and then other languages as well. And that was the other amazing thing was this Harvard, Harvard guy, really obviously very, very well educated Harvard guy asking really quite, quite difficult questions of these teenagers. And here's these, these Finnish teenagers speaking English as a second or third language, answering, first of all, understanding what he's saying and then answering in beautiful English, you know? And so there's another, there's another aspect of their education as well. While they're, while they're learning all these other things, they're also learning two or three languages. And not, you know, and again, learning them properly so they can actually use them. Whereas in Japan, as we've talked about before, you know, the, the education system here for, for learning language is just terrible, you know. They give kids textbooks about the, uh, whole textbooks of, about the grammar, explaining grammar rules, and then whole books of words, so, so like a dictionary, basically, of words that the kids have to remember. So they're trying to memorize grammar rules and memorize uh, vocabulary just from the books just from the books, which anybody who's learned a second or third language will know isn't isn't the way to learn language at all, you know? And then, so, so again, everything that this guy, everything that Finland does, Japan does the opposite. And then they had, and then they had, uh, oh, he was talking about testing. They, they hardly do any tests. They, they don't do many tests at all until they get to the end of high school and do a couple of tests at the end of high school. But, but usually they don't do any tests because there's no need to. They're, they're really only trying to improve themselves. So to do tests just to compare them with each other isn't the aim of the exercise. So they don't do any tests. Whereas Japan has the opposite, opposite approach. You know, recently the, Japan knows that they have to do something about the language thing because they know that, that they're falling behind the world. They're ranking consistently really low when it comes to language. And that, as a result, Japan's really isolated from the rest of the world because uh, there's very few Japanese people who can really communicate effectively with the outside world. And and they know that's the problem, but they have no idea that they're not looking at how to solve it properly. So, you know, recently the Prime Minister of Japan announced that, that to, to try and help solve that problem, they're going to, uh, to have a compulsory English test for everybody entering university which is the opposite of what Finland does and, and, and all that's going to do, and, and we actually mentioned this in a video a while ago, that all that's going to do is that go, it is going to illustrate further that the English level in Japan is really low. That's all that's going to do. It's not going to guarantee that anybody can communicate in English. It's just going to illustrate further, you know, that, that the English level in Japan is really low. So. It was just amazing. It was just absolutely amazing that just about everything that, that, that these guys were saying, and because the Harvard guy is there because he's trying to find out what techniques Finland's using to get such excellent results. So he can take that, that information back to the States and, and help apply that in the US to improving the education level in the US because while Finland was number one or number two in most of the things, uh, you know, the US was like number 23 or number 24. And, and Japan is up there. When, in those tests, it's the, uh, what do they call it? Like fish dish. There's a test, there's a, a test that they apply to students all around the world to try and work out which, which countries are performing better than others. And Japan does rank pretty well in those tests because, you know, because Japanese people are well educated, there's no doubt about it. So, so that, is, that is definitely the case, that Japan is up there. And in a couple of the, 
uh, PowerPoint demonstrations he did, he had the different countries ranking, and, and, and quite often Japan was up there as well. But the, the thing is, the difference is that, that Japanese students are doing five times as much work to achieve a lower result than, than what Finland's achieving. So, a couple other really important points too was that the, 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 the Finnish attitude is that, that, that kids have to learn, uh, have to have free time and have to have the ability to, to develop as individuals and to, to develop their minds to be able to think. Whereas in the Japan system it's all about, it's all about study and remembering everything, that's all they focus on. And the, the Finnish style is to try and get individual thinkers in the end and have to treat it from the, totally from a, an individual perspective whereas in Japan of course it's just all about programming people to be like each other you know that, that's all they want is everybody to, to absorb this information take on this this information and understand uh, not uh, and remember all this information and there's no focus at all on innovation or individuality or anything like that free thinking or anything like that the Finnish people also said that it was, it was really interesting listening to the kids being interviewed because because the the, the the people that were explaining the, the Finnish system were saying that, that the kids have lots of free time to do things and explore things for themselves and to think for themselves and to, 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 to be creative and that sort of thing. And, and when they're interviewing these kids, I mean, the first thing that was so impressive was was the, their language skills were so amazing, you know. But the next thing is what they're actually saying. They were all free thinkers. You know, this guy was, this Harvard guy was asking them their opinion. What's your opinion on this? And how do you, how do you feel about this? And what do you think about this? And each one of them, there was no hesitation. He'd ask a question and quite difficult, you know, quite high level sort of uh, intellectual type questions. And, and straight away, someone would answer, I think this, and in my opinion, this, and then the next next person, these are all teenagers, 15, 16 years old, and then the next one would give their opinion, the next one, I agree with him, but I also think this, and then all of them would have their own thinking and their own opinion. And anybody who's lived in Japan long term and has had anything to do with, with kids here, you know, usually elementary school, the kids have a bit of individuality and a bit of free thinking, a bit of imagination. But by the time they get to junior high school, it's just been knocked out of them. You know, the, the, the free thinking, the personality, they, be, they get more and more robotic as they get further into the education system. And, and you'll know kids, you know, we've got family friends that had kids that were quite funny kids when they were 9, 10, 11 years old, you know. And then you see them, you don't see them for a couple of years and then, you know, they go off to junior high school and then you see them again and they're just robots. The, the, the education system just plumb this, this, this reading and memorizing thing that they do. And, and if you ask them something, you know, like what did you do on the weekend, the answers are always the same. I went to Juku. I went to club. You know, they might be in the school tennis club or something. I played tennis. I went to club. What else did you do? You know, because if you ask kids from other countries what they did on the weekend, oh, I met up with my friends and we went shopping and we went to the beach and we did this and did that and there's none of that. It's just, I went to club, I went to Juku, you know? And if you ask them what they thought, and if you ask a creative thought, like, like you know, just something silly, like, hey, Harry Potter, if you had a Harry Potter wand, you know, what would you do? Uh, uh, you know, any sort of, any sort of question that involves a bit of free thinking, the only answers that they can usually give you are the ones that they've been programmed to give you, you know? And it's the same with the language thing. If you do get a kid somewhere who says, hello, and you say, hello, how are you? They say, I'm fine, thank you, and you? Right, because that's what they're programmed to say. And then if you ask them another question, that's the end of it. Because the only, and, and I'm not just, not just in English, I mean in Japanese as well, you know, you, you sit and have a talk to a teenage Japanese kid, and, and you know, trying to get them to talk, it's just all this, it's the same conversation. It's the, their program, you know, I go to school, I go to Juku, I go to club. And that's it. Are you trying to get them to think about something else, to talk about something else? They'll sort of give you a funny look and laugh. And quite often, quite often Japanese adults are the same. I mean, this isn't always the case. Like with all these videos, it's just, these are generalizations about what's generally the case. And it's not always the case. We know some free thinking kids and we know some free thinking adults but but quite often quite often and people who've lived in Japan will know this is true that quite often you know you speak to teenagers or adults 
and ask their opinions on things and they, you know and it, we've talked about before there's a whole heap of videos we've made that illustrate this and a classic example is do something a little bit different in Japan you know don't use a straw to when when you're drinking out of the little mini milk carton don't use a straw or do anything a little bit different from what everybody else does and you get the eh, everybody will do it uh, do anything different at all you know which is the exact opposite of what this this whole Finnish uh, experience is about is about you know people being individual and you know people thinking for themselves and people being innovative and thinking of their own innovation we've talked about this before and, and people have comments but Japan's really innovative they've come up with all sorts of new things no not really you know, they make a really good car, but they made that by bringing a Ford from America, you know, 60 years ago and pulling it down to little pieces and learning how it was made and then they made a better one and, you know, they copy the IBM computer and they copy Swiss watches and, you know, they copy things and then make them smaller and better, but, but it's really not a lot of innovation going on. And there is, I mean, again, there's exceptions to this. There are, there are some wonderful Japanese innovations and we've showed them to you. We've showed them to you, but there'd be a hell of a lot more. I mean, Japanese people are really, really intelligent people. In in IQ tests, Japanese people always score pretty well and sort of above average compared to the rest of the world. So there's no doubt that you know there's really intelligent Japanese people, and there is a lot of there are a lot of people, Japanese people who are very innovative, but many, much, much less, many less than what there there could be if 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 more innovation was was encouraged so it's sort of it might seem like an odd video to you guys but to, to people who spent long term in Japan or people who will spend spend long term in Japan this sort of stuff really hits home because it's what we see every day and it sort of does it does get frustrating sometimes this I mean in some ways the robotic thing is really good because it means that's one of the reasons that the society is so civilized and 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 so nice to live here is because everyone does do the same thing and it is sort of standardized and it is you know that's all good in, in in a lot of ways but sometimes it really does hit at exactly how robotic everybody is you know and in particular it's just really sad when you have kids in your life and I mean we've got we've got lots of kids in our family in-laws and things and there's lots of kids that live around us and friends of friends and you know we got kids around us all the time and it's just sad it's just really sad to see the personalities just sort of squashed out of them or something as this all this programming is forced in the personalities just seem to fade away until there's nothing much left and it's just really sad you know that example before about young young people that we know that were sort of funny and had personalities and were sort of you know really interesting little people when they were at elementary school and then you see them a few years later after they've been in junior high school for a while and they're just hey how are you I haven't seen you for ages what are you doing oh school you know what did you do on the weekend what have you been doing oh, juku you know just just sad just sad and that'll be the high point what's the best thing you did during the holidays juku do you like juku Yes, mm, you know. So, and and then you compare that with these these Finnish kids were amazing. You know, these 14, 15, 16 year old Finnish kids, really intelligent, uh, real personalities, real individual thinking, real, real uh, really interesting. Just let me stop for a minute. I just want to check. There's a list of things here. Just want to make sure we got it all because there's some amazing things here. Same education for every everyone. Second happiest people in the world after the Danish, which is sort of relevant too. I mean, in Japan, happiness, you know, we made a video once about suffering and, and hardship, and that's considered a good thing in Japan. And the aim of being happy just doesn't enter into it. No one seems to give that any thought at all because that's sort of a selfish thing. If you think about your happiness, that's sort of a selfish thing that doesn't contribute to the group. So there's no talk of that here. Whereas in Finland, that's held up as being an important point, that you be happy, which you'd think was a fundamental, isn't it, to, to life, isn't it, you know? Yeah, Finland's about cooperation, Japan's about competition. Uh, yeah, the Finland system is personalization, where about the individual. Japan's all about standardization, making everybody the same. 
Um, yeah, the language thing, Japan, one language, you know, majority of Japanese people, one language, very, very few people get, can actually communicate in English well, and in Finland, three or four languages. Um, the, the Japanese uh, performance is falling. So as each year as they measure Japanese um, academic performance compared to the rest of the world, it, it's fallen a bit more, whereas the Finnish system has been improving every year. So it just means that the Japanese way of doing it is failing. Every year it's going down, and Finland every year it's going up. So, um, oh, the homework, yeah, really homework. And they teach the students to think, whereas all they're really doing in Japan is just programming the, the students to remember. And it's, it's impossible. They, they, they give them all these textbooks and think that if they, if they study 100 hours a week, that they're going to remember all this stuff. And, of course, it's just not, you know, anybody who's learned a second language knows you can't remember every grammar rule and every word by just reading it in a book and then memorising it. It doesn't work. That's not how we learn language, you know, and that's not how we learn anything. And that's exactly what the Finnish people are talking about, you know. They had done, this is interesting too, the kids do 60% of the talking in the classroom and the teachers do 40%. So they're not sitting there listening to the teacher and taking notes like they are in Japan. They're actually communicating. They're sitting there talking and, and thinking for themselves and giving opinions and things. So if you've lived in Japan for a while, you'll be sitting there listening to this nodding or shaking your head sadly or something probably because you know it's just it's sort of sad to watch it's sort of it seems like such a waste of life that everybody here is putting so much time into these efforts that really are a waste a real waste of their lives you know they could be so much more effective and so much more happy by just doing things in a in a more happy more sort of thought out sort of way this this at the moment this programming system that they're using it's just sad it's just sad you know it really is so if you haven't seen that that Finnish uh, documentary yet uh, have a look on YouTube just search Finland education system and there's a whole bunch of things Michael Moore did a thing on it too this guy from Harvard University is probably the best one because he's the you know he's the man knows all about it and he interviewed all the interesting people right from the education minister down so he, he got all the interesting people to talk to so hopefully some people found this interesting if you're a teacher you, you'll be interested in that documentary that was that was absolutely amazing and then just other people I mean that from our point of view it's just that we know all these people that are living this life we're seeing this all the time and it's sort of interesting it really hit home because we've made so many videos that have sort of touched on this topic and it sort of was interesting to see that actually the way we'd been thinking about it was sort of on the right track because it's always seemed wasteful that kids sit, spend all their time at school and juku and, and, and just don't have a life and just end up like zombies at the end of it. They end up like robots, a lot of them, you know? And it's just really sad. Really sad. Really sad. And because they don't... Because change doesn't happen in Japan, you know? They just do the same thing forever. So... You know, whereas the, the, the Harvard guys over there looking at how to do things better in the US, Japan wouldn't do that. Japan would just keep doing. If you if you showed the education minister in Japan that documentary, he'd go, oh, very interesting, very interesting. Omoshiroi, eh, omoshiroi. And then he wouldn't change anything. That's usually what they do. When they see that there's someone else doing something better, they go, oh, that's really good. And then they don't do it. So it's sort of sad in a way, but... That wasn't supposed to be the tone of the video. The tone of the video was just supposed to be a comparison between the Finnish education system and the Japanese one. Exact opposite. In every way. In absolutely every way. The exact opposite. Including the results. Anyway, there it was. More videos. Coming soon. <laughs>